There are stories worth sharing, but if you can't tell them properly, the weight of that story just becomes irrelevant. I have a good friend named Zach. Hey! You might know him as Exact. Let's go! Let's go, baby! Zach is a full-time streamer and professional competitor for Call of Duty Warzone. Over the past few years, he's fostered a space that allows people from around the globe to connect, share experiences, and really support his journey to becoming one of the best competitors in his field. Oh my God, give me that. Everybody has something that makes them feel comfortable or even hopeful, and his stream became that for a lot of people. But Zach disappeared for six months, and it's my job to tell that story. When Zach first came to me to help him make his return, I thought it might be a good idea to record myself going through the editing process. This is day two, we got a lot to get done. A lot of times people see the final product, but don't ever get to understand what it takes to create a 10 to 12 minute video on YouTube. And if it's all right with you, I'm gonna do my best to show you. Quick disclaimer, I am not a professional editor. I don't have a degree or frankly, any certification, but I did learn a lot while making this and I'm proud of what we created. Can you say good morning? Alrighty. So I finished the things that I needed to get done this morning and I have a couple other things I wanna take care of this afternoon and then I'm gonna start Zach's edit. We've come up with a script for some of the things that we want him to say and address, and he started getting some of the IRL shots, and so I'm gonna start piecing that together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking some of Zach's voiceovers and bring them into DaVinci and start the edit process there. Because what I wanna do is I wanna get a visual of some of the things that are gonna be said and the pace of the edit. There are a lot of vehicles an editor can use to tell their story. And for this particular video, we used Zach's voice as the pace setter. My name is Zach and I compete and create content for Warzone. When I'm working with gameplays or stream highlights that aren't necessarily recorded with the intention of being made into a video, one of the most straightforward fixes to link those assets together is a narrator. It's not always the right decision, but for this type of video, we felt like not only could Zach's voice push the story along, but it could also provide some insight into what he was thinking during past events. So we start there. I slap a color on Zach's dialogue and start listening for his best takes. A lot of things happening behind the scenes that I haven't shared. From from there, I can start spacing out the video and get a feeling for the pace and visuals I'd like to use. Alrighty, so it's getting late here and I've made some decent progress, but we got a long ways to go. What I might have to do is map out some milestones that we can try to hit this week if we're gonna try to get this done on time. Alrighty, this is day two. We got a lot to get done. We are here. We need to get here by the end of today. What that means is I'm gonna need to have music picked out, and a rough overlook of the edit itself. Um, what I would like to do is be able to cut together a trailer to post tomorrow, which is gonna be Wednesday. Wednesday, we need to get here. All righty, listen, I had good intentions, but just like any other project, Nothing went to plan. This wasn't the only thing I was working on during this week. So what ended up happening a lot of mornings is I would get caught up trying to wrap up and finish other projects before I could get to Zach's video. But can you blame me for being optimistic? A lot of times with these things, I have to edit stuff into the morning. I don't wanna do that for this video. I'd like to finish Thursday night, but we're gonna see how that goes. Always heard that you're supposed to pour in some hot water first into the French press to kind of let, let your stuff, you know. Uh, one of the videos that I needed to get done is rendering now, but I am definitely behind, stressing a little bit. Um, I'm debating on whether or not I should still go to the gym. I think I should just so I can get outside, but uh, yeah, we, we really got a lot of stuff we got to get done this evening. It's just about noon on Tuesday and video's going live Friday. So we, we really gotta get going. Time to start the video. I wanted to approach the intro for this video a little bit differently than what I normally do. When I go to edit a gameplay or any YouTube video, my goal is to work extremely hard within those opening seconds to show the viewer something. Something that says this video isn't clickbait, it's gonna deliver on the promise of the title. But because gameplays on YouTube are so saturated, I tend to be more in your face with those openers. This video is different. The focus is more on Zach's story and journey than what gun he's using in game. So the question becomes, how do I make an intro that fits the tone 
without being cliche or just boring? Well, I had an idea and I think it came out okay. Zach has this shot of the sun setting with him walking into frame and sitting down. Visually, not only does it look great, but I also add a title wipe right when he walks by. By doing this, I felt like I was still able to immediately show that this video was gonna have some level of production and cinematic quality. And if I didn't lose viewers within these opening seconds, I then had a little wiggle room to develop tension. It took me a little searching, but I found this really good instrumental that I wanted to use. It's got an airy feel to it, it's slightly mysterious, and it was just what I was looking for. I start to fade in muffled voices from clips later on in the video. I couple this with some risers and slowly add interference and camera shaking on screen to add some discomfort. This along with the instrumental I use in the background builds into the opening visual effects shot. You might be thinking, hey Brandon, aren't you overthinking what should be a pretty basic establishing shot? I mean, maybe. I'm still pretty new to making videos. What might seem obvious to you or someone with more experience is something I really have to work through right now, but I'm getting better. All right, so we are wrapping up day two right now, and I have a rough cut of the intro. I'm definitely still behind where I need to be, but what I will say is I have a good idea for like the creative vision of the video which is big because before I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go with things. So that's good. I was definitely worried and stressed. I'm kind of taking a risk with spending so much time on this opening sequence. It's why a lot of bigger channels will actually hire somebody specifically to edit the intro outside of the lead editor. But since I am a one man team, I really got to wrap this up. And on the start of Wednesday, my goal is to finish the main visual effects opening shot. The idea that I had was this. Before Zach's hiatus, he was on his ascent. He was climbing the ranks of the Warzone leaderboards and he was establishing himself as one of the best players in the world. But obviously things didn't play out quite like we had hoped to. So what if we could visualize someone falling without explicitly saying those words? So what I did is I found this stock video of somebody parachuting out of a plane. It captured the right motion that I was looking for, but obviously we don't want the likeness of this random parachuter. So what I do is mask them out of the video and apply a watercolor effect that essentially limits the color detail. And I now have the silhouette I'm looking for. And what I wanna do is have this falling through a montage of upcoming moments to help illustrate the feeling that I'm trying to get at. And I use the opening instrumental as the primary motivator and pace setter for this montage. Is it perfect? No. Is it good? Well, I don't know, not really, but I felt like it illustrated exactly what I was looking for. We're now three days into the edit and I've officially finished the opening minute. I've done my best to present enough information to the viewer to say, do you care enough to watch? If you're keeping score at home, today is Thursday, which means I have 24 hours to finish this video. Sounds about right to me. Alrighty, it's around lunchtime on Thursday. We still have a good chunk of the edit to do but i was able to get a little more sleep last night which was nice taking a little lunch break right now gonna exercise for a bit just get a little sunlight and then we'll get back to it i'm still feeling pretty behind on the edit itself but in a good spot if that makes sense i feel like the road ahead is pretty clear at this point and it's just a matter of doing it which is a good feeling this is where that prep work I did on day one is gonna pay off. Before I went to bed last night, I brought over the voiceover from day one and started to lay out the rest of the video. What I need to focus on today is pacing and emotion. Zach's voiceover will serve as my guide, but I need to make sure I give sections enough room to breathe, while also elevating and heightening the viewer's emotions where it's deserved. A rookie mistake editors make, and one that I still make, is the misuse of music. Either the mix is too loud, it's too soft, there's no music or it's the wrong song choice. And I'm getting better with these decisions over time, but one thing I'm learning is to not force audio. For example, without any spoilers, in one of the emotionally tougher moments of the video, instead of including a sad piano or a violin that could be distracting, I chose to use silence. You were counting on me. I put my heart and soul into this year and I lost.
hopefully by doing this, we let the viewer sit and feel the weight of what Zach is going through. In this moment, I felt like it was okay to not focus on being additive and just let the media speak for itself. As editors, I think a lot of times we feel we have to look for ways to add to a video, you know, some kind of punch in or glow or subtitle. But there are points where it's okay to trust your audience to enjoy what was captured on its own. There were only a couple of other visual sequences I needed to get done. I didn't want to focus too much on the gameplay aspect of the five plus hour tournament footage I had, so I created this 3D floating screen scene. I used it as my time passing mechanism, and luckily I already had some practice doing 3D things like this, so I knew how to lay it out and just focused on compositing it with some textures and focus blurs. I also grabbed this After Effects stock template. As a working professional, yes, I should develop my own assets over time and create high quality work that's unique to me, but if I can save six hours worth of time, you best believe I'm turning to Envato Elements. With the time I had left, all I was really thinking about was doing justice to Zach's story. Zach's been a really good friend over the years to me and I knew this was an important video to him. All the visual and graphic elements had been completed and I used them to highlight certain areas. And then when it was needed, I included sound design for some emotional impact. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys when I see y'all. Love you guys, peace. There are some good guiding principles out there for how you make decisions and choices as an editor. But I think a lot of it comes down to experience and feeling. As the person who's often closest to the story, you know what naturally feels right. As Thursday night went on, I was feeling more confident about getting the video done and meeting the deadline. I got around two thirds of the way done before I started feeling really tired and burnt out. It is officially the morning of publish day. And to be perfectly honest, I did not end up recording too much. Zach sent me his final talking head sequence late last night and I just needed to wrap the final version of the edit. I actually took the morning for myself. There's a certain point for me creatively where I become absolutely useless after sitting for too long. So I decided to get some fresh air and got back to it a little bit later in the day. I had four hours until publish time, not including the 30 minutes to upload and process the video or the 30 minutes to format it for YouTube. So I guess I had three hours and I edited my little heart out. This isn't much of a spoiler, but I did indeed finish the video. I don't think it's perfect or a masterpiece, but I think the people it was intended for really enjoyed it. There's always things I can improve, but for me, there's a point where smaller changes just don't add as much value. So I maximize the time I have and work on making better choices the next time. If you wanna follow along with me or maybe learn yourself, feel free to subscribe here. And if you ended up watching Zach's video, I would love to know what you thought or if you had any advice for me. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.